Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, as the Brexit crisis rumbles on between politicians, today marks a shift where Remain voters could now outnumber Leave voters, even if no one who voted in the 2016 referendum changed their mind, a new survey suggests that because of a demographic shift, most of those who've grown up learning about Brexit and can now vote would choose to remain in the European Union. In Westminster now is Peter Kellner, he's the former president of YouGov, who worked out the figures. Peter, please talk us through them and explain them to us. Kim, it's relatively straightforward. Roughly 600,000 people each year die. Around 700,000 people <clears throat> each year uh, reach voting age, 18. Um, and we know broadly that elderly people are two to one in favour of Brexit. New voters are roughly seven to one in favour of Remain. Now, of course, turnout is much higher amongst older people than younger people, so you've got to factor turnout into it. But when you crunch those numbers, uh, the estimate I make is that every day these demographic changes reduce the lead majority, the, the leave majority, by about 1,350. And you simply divide that number uh, into the overall leave majority, which was uh, about 1.3 million, and you can work out the number of days it takes. And today's the day, that crossover point, this is crossover day, and from tomorrow, uh, if my figures are exactly right, from tomorrow, Britain becomes a remain country, even if all the people who voted last time who are still able to vote were to vote exactly the same way. Why the assumption that um, those who've grown up learning about Brexit and who can now vote would choose to remain in the EU? That's the polling that we found um, consistently. Um, every poll you look at, YouGov has done most, but uh, other companies have done quite a bit of polling. Every poll you look at finds that younger voters are overwhelmingly remain. And the youngest of people who've reached voting age since 2016, and by March there'll be nearly two million of them, people who couldn't vote last time, who could now, they are something like seven to one, those who vote seven to one for remain. Did they say why? Uh, well, what you, what you find is that, uh, first of all, people are thinking about their long-term futures. The people who are now reaching voting age, they will have, on average, what, 50, 60, 70 more years of life to come. They will have the... Then they will face longer than any other group by definition, because they're younger, the consequences of Britain's decision. Um, whereas for older people, it's much more about nostalgia. It's much more about their feeling. The Leave voters of my generation feel that Britain has gone a bit to the dogs over the last 30, 40, 50 years. So the older people are thinking about recapturing the past, whereas younger voters are thinking how Britain will change if Brexit goes ahead, and they don't like what they see. Do you think that young people who did actually vote uh, leave and who would still vote leave could hear what you're saying and think it sounded a bit patronising? I, I hope it's not patronising, it's not intended to be patronising. And of course, there are older voters who will remain and there are younger voters who will leave. And one is including those in the calculation. All I'm saying is, if you just look at the numbers, one of the big things, which we all noticed, I think, uh, in the referendum in 2016, is this huge age gradient. The older you got, the more likely you were to vote leave. The younger you were, the more likely you were to vote remain. And that was one of the startling it, there was this huge generation gap in 2016, just there was a huge education gap. And, and that's a fact of life, and it's not patronising, I, I don't think, to point that out. Do you think, given the time that we live in, how device, divisive this um, issue is, that it's, a, it's dangerous to use rhetoric that uh, says, oh, we've, we've done this survey and today, Britain switches from a pro-Brexit to an anti-Brexit country. I think the problem, Kimberly, is this, that almost anything one say, says or, or does is going to offend or disappoint uh, somebody. It, we are a divided country. If we were to have a new referendum in which the two million youngsters could now vote, that will plainly upset a lot of Leave voters. But equally, if Brexit goes ahead uh, without uh, a, a referendum, without these youngsters having a chance to vote, I think that will be divisive in another way. I don't think there is now, 
where we are today, a choice between a divisive and a non-divisive future for the rest of this year. We, we, we've sadly got to choose which kind of division we're prepared to put up with. I think the hope on all sides, I'm not making a remain or a leave point, no, on all sides is that by the time we finally got through this, then we can start the healing process. But I fear, honestly, that division is uh, our inevitable fate for the next few months. Do you not think this is a bit presumptuous and that the only thing that could actually officially determine whether Britain is a pro-Brexit or an anti-Brexit country is a second referendum? Oh, I think, I think that's right. I mean, I, I, I'm simply been undertaking a mathematical exercise, given that the vote uh, nearly three years ago was a pretty close vote, and given that this huge generation gap happened, and given the fact that people die and people reach voting age, I'm making no claim for it beyond that. I mean, what actually happened, all the data shows that if you take the people who are still voters, who are voters then, quite a few more have switched from leave to remain than from remain to leave. So the, the latest poll last week, just after the uh, big Commons vote, showed that if there was a referendum today, we reckon there'd be a 56% vote for remain, a 44% vote for leave. And if you put on the ballot paper a specific form of leave, either Theresa May's withdrawal agreement or crashing out without a deal, the remain majority grows more because the more specific you make the leave proposition, the more some leave voters say, well, I'd like to leave, but I'm not sure I want that version um, of leave. So I, I'm making no assumption about what other people, uh, what, what people do. All I'm saying is mathematically, you don't need anybody to change their minds to reach the conclusion that on demographic trends alone, Today is the day when Britain moves from a leave majority to a remain majority. Okay. Peter Kellner, thank you so much. Fascinating to talk to you.